It's tax time in Singapore, and from the beginning of March, you'll be able to lodge your tax return and find out exactly what your tax bill is for the 2023 calendar year. Hi there, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat finance planner here in Singapore, and today we're talking Singapore tax. Now, for most of us, we don't have a lot to complain about in Singapore. When we compare tax rates to back home in Australia, obviously the marginal income tax rates with the top rate being 24% compared to Australia's 47, and of course the complete lack of capital gains tax in Singapore makes it very attractive. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be planning for it or that we shouldn't be claiming the legitimate deductions we might be eligible for. So here's how it all works. An important one, particularly if this is your first tax return here in Singapore, you might be new to the country and wondering how it all works. So what happens for the majority of Australian expats who are employed by a company, their employer will fill out the IR8A form, submit that for you, you'll receive a notice that your uh, tax return has effectively been lodged. That form will contain your income, your variable income, CPF contributions if they've been made, anything else that forms part of your income declared to the tax authority here in Singapore, which is IRAS. Now, from the beginning of March, that is when you can log into your tax portal via the IRAS website and submit any deductions that you wish to claim. Of course, you need to make sure that they are eligible deductions, which for the majority of Australian expats, they're reimbursed by their employer. So there's usually not a great deal that can be claimed but if there are courses related to your work that you've undertaken, you can often claim the cost there. If you have life, uh, life insurance here in Singapore, providing the insurer is here in Singapore and has a presence, you can also claim that premium deduction as well. So again, review what's possible. Don't pay any more tax than you need to. Make sure you keep a record of any deductions that you're claiming. There is a template you can download. Can't find it, drop me a note, happy to send it through. Um, and just make sure that you're keeping an electronic record of all of those receipts, invoices, etc., for anything that you're claiming against your Singapore tax. Now, once your return is submitted, you will get your bill. Here's where your next key decision comes in, and that is really how you would like to pay your tax bill uh, to IRS, because you've got a few options here. Sadly, one of those options is not paying it at all. That is not one of your choices, but the choices you have are to either pay it as a lump sum, or pay it each month in arrears. Now, paying it as a lump sum obviously allows you to get it out of the way, it reduces the monthly cash flow burden, but it does mean that we have that initial cash outlay we need to think about and factor in. Uh, obviously, paying monthly means that we can keep that cash, or if we don't already have that cash, we can build it up over time, or if we're looking to invest that cash, then obviously that might be working for us better than paying off our tax all at once. The one important thing to bear in mind is that if you are paying your tax off monthly, and if you are to lose your job or suddenly need to leave Singapore, that could be quite a large bill because you've got to repay all of last year's tax plus the tax bill accrued to the point in the financial year that you actually leave the country. So just be aware, make sure we're planning for our tax bills, make sure we're claiming any deductions that we are eligible for, and that of course are eligible claims and keeping the accurate records. I hope that helps. It is a wonderfully simple tax system in Singapore, but do drop me a note, reach out with any questions. Remember to subscribe and thank you for tuning in.